First time I went, like I was so broke. So I literally brought MREs with me to eat. That's hardcore, Dude, bro. I, <laughs> it was like one of those things where I was like coming up to it and I was looking at my bank account and I was like, I don't know if I can do this, but I, I think I might do it. I think I might die, but I don't give a shit. I'm going to do I'll it. I'll be in Japan. So even though this place was out in the middle of nowhere, they're still, oh, we have to be very quiet. <laughs> what the it's, heck? It's weird. It's weird. But also, like, they're very concerned about noise, but they weren't concerned about safety, like, at all. And you, well, yeah. You would think, you would think, <laughs> That's like, the, the most German thing ever. <laughs> yeah. You would think, like, the Germans, though, like, they're like, oh, Tom, we have to have this in very, very similar situation. Everybody has to be very safe. You have to wear the accent. You know, I know, you're what killing the hell? it, bro. <laughs> Welcome back to the number one drift podcast on YouTube. I am Dawson. I'm Nate. And? Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so my last name is really hard to say, so it's just Otluski. It, it, most people look at it. Okay, I was going to ask hell. you about that. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah, know yeah, for no. sure. It's just, it's pronounced like it's spelt, unfortunately. Sweet. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, uh, a few announcements, of course. Uh, Hyperfest, May 19th through the 21st. Don't forget about that. And uh, of course, you got the $10 off code. But uh, join the Patreon if you want to see a little bit more behind the scenes, uh, like vlogs and stuff like that. Uh, and then, of course, ad-free podcasts. Um, and then, if you aren't already, hit the subscribe button. Uh, it helps out tremendously. Hit the subscribe button, damn it. I'll drop in a clip here of who won the 10K sub giveaway. I've got to run the numbers on that and see. Uh, check with uh, the dude over at Hyperfest. But Thanks to each and every one of you that entered into the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. We really appreciate you guys. And don't worry, we definitely will have some giveaways in the future. But I have the winner right here. So I'm going to give a big congratulations to Siraj Mira. I really hope I didn't butcher that, buddy, but congratulations. And of course, if you missed the entire giveaway, this was actually for an Abel Fab Part custom Circle Adrift, one of one exhaust tip, along with us teaming up with Hyperfest to give away two free general admission passes for the entire weekend. So if you wanna make sure that you are entered into the next giveaway, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and turn on bell notifications so you don't miss a video for us to announce it. But other than that, congrats Siraj, let's get back to the podcast. We thought Jimmy Oaks was uh, Mr. Worldwide, but this guy's kind of <laughs> yeah, been, been around everywhere. the world for yeah, sure. Bit, so uh, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit? Uh, All right. Um, yeah, my name is Paul. Uh, I live in Lakeland, Florida, and basically I've been around drifting since like 2004 was when I started driving. But like I was interested in the sport and learned about it in like 2001 back when – there was no media like at all. It was like, I just kind of happened upon it online because I liked looking at pictures of crashed cars when I was 14. Like I was like, Oh yeah, look at this idiot. He crashed his car. And then it, it would just say like drifting accident. I was like, what the hell is drifting? You know? And so I started looking it up and then I was like, Oh my God, I got to do this. So I bought my, bought a car and yeah, just my whole life. It's been the only consistent thing through my like entire life is being somehow around it or involved in, in some kind of way, but very cool. Yeah. Well, that was that you just actually tackled the first question. Well, I, I mean, was gonna ask, and since you did yeah, kind of get in and around, what was yeah. it, 2004? So, 2001 was when I found it. And uh, back then, you know, I was like dial up internet. I'd, I was one of those kids that just sat on the computer way too damn much. And um, very early, sort of like inter internet adopter, I was really, really into rotary engines at the time, which I mean, is dumb. Uh, I've never owned I've never owned one. I've never had a rotary powered car, but I, at the time I was obsessed with them. And so there was a website. They was, sound cool. I'll give oh them no, that. no, they sound cool. Like and back then I was just like enamored with like oh it only has three moving parts. That is the sickest thing ever. That's why I've got one out there. I won't work on. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I saw the RX seven out there. I was like, oh, that's cool. And um, but the um, uh, there was a website that was called threerotor.com, and it was a Australian website. And one, it had a section on there that was just like called like crash car crashes or something like that. It was just like all these RX sevens wrapped around trees and crashed into like ditches and shit. And I was just like, I was like, yeah, this is cool. I don't know. I'm 14. Like, what? Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, 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 I'm 
sitting there benefiting off of other people's suffering. You know, I was like, <laughs> you know, like some yeah. people like going on rotten.com and seeing somebody's head chopped off with like a helicopter or something like that. <laughs> you know, I mean, when, when, when you're young, like when you're like no, a teenager, I, yeah, I know, I know. you know, I was and, homeschooled. I used to get on stick figure death theater. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, my no. God, dude. Did no, I love that. I side. forgot about that. So they banned it from my school. When I, in, in, <laughs> when I, when I eventually went to cascade, I turned so many people onto it. That's the school I graduated from that they, they made it where you, couldn't get it on the wi-fi oh, uh, yeah I'm, I'm sure there was a way around it though i don't know my brother would know i just remember going on there you could just do we just have vpns back content then? forever you know it was Dude. just hundreds of videos my school was so bad where they like they never set up like any sort of like parental controls or any kind of like it was like back when like the school administrators were like internet what is this oh oh okay we'll let the, the students uh run rampant on this this is fine and then like people would just be like looking up all kinds of crazy shit all yeah. the time at school but i would sit there and i'd be looking up like drift cars and stuff in japan because like i found this you know, I found that crash blog thing and I was like, oh, drifting accident, drifting accident. Yeah. Drift. And I was like, these are all in Japan. What the, What is this drifting thing? And then um, and then I started searching it out and I found there was this website it was like one of the only English drifting websites at the time was, I guess, run by some service members that were stationed in Japan. It was like called like a hyper, it was like hyper velocity or velocity drift team or something like that. I've heard of that. It was like yeah. a bunch of Marine dudes or like Gaijin guys that were over in, um, in Japan. And they were like, they had all these like really small, tiny little pictures that were like, you know, probably like 240 <laughs> P like blocky, like, you know, cut yourself on the, on the pixels kind yeah, of like yeah. pictures <laughs> of drifting. And then they were like explaining toge and they were explaining like how this worked. And then through that, I found initial D and like at the time, like initial D was only like the first season was only a couple of years old. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, I was like, Oh my God, there's an anime about drifting. Cause like I loved anime when I was like a teenager and, uh, I was like, I can. Never I liked I, it. I, I'm like, I need. To I still watch, watch it. I need to watch this show, and um, so I got on like the peer to peer sites like Kazaa and LimeWire and shit, and I was like downloading oh, full yeah. episodes, <laughs> giving your computer AIDS. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> it was like I would like queue up a download on a video on a, on an episode of Initial D, and then I would wait like three days for it to download, yeah. and it was <laughs> like, I mean, I would have to put a sheet over my monitor so I could block out all the glare and then like put my eyes like three inches from the screen just so I could see this, like see what was going on so I could even read the subtitles. Yeah. And um, I remember, <laughs> dude. My boy is about it. <laughs> I, was, I was fucking like obsessed for like, uh, for a few years. And then like, I don't know, like six months after I found it, I was like, I was 14 and I was like, I have to get myself a car. I gotta be Takumi. What was your car? What was uh, your first car? First car was a uh, 88 Nissan 200SX SE. So it was an S12, the last year of the S12 with, really? the, v with the V6. Nice. Yeah, because I'm an idiot. And uh, I was yeah, like, I've heard they're trash. They're horrible cars. Absolutely. And <laughs> in, in, in the worst part was is that when I was that young, I was like, I've never seen anybody drive these things. I'm going to be the S12 guy. Right? <laughs> so. I'm dumb as hell, but like at the time I didn't realize how big of a difference there was between an S12 and S13, like how, how they drove. Oh, it's like closer to a Honda Accord. I Dude, feel like yeah. that it's like the worst car I've ever driven. Like, and I've driven a lot of stuff now and I'm still like going on. I'm like, that is the most difficult car to drive. <laughs> by far. What about, you went to Ebisu, right? Mm -hmm. Did you drive Ebisu? Yeah. Okay. What was Twice. that like? So Ebisu, um, the first time I went was in 2010, and at the time, that was kind of like before the whole every all the influencers and everything going to Ebisu and like doing these like trips and shit. And there wasn't really like a game plan on like how to do it, right? But I had joined the Air Force in 2008, so when I went uh, the first time, I was stationed in Korea, and so that I figured because like when you go when you go over there, they call it a short tour, so you yeah, have like yeah. one year and you can, they essentially authorize, you can take up to 30 days of leave. Most people take that leave and go back to the United States. And I'm like, Fuck, why Japan, would, why would you do that? <laughs> like, I mean, it's literally like an hour and a half flight to Japan. Like, no. So I bought a car through power vehicles. And then like, I kind of relied on them a lot to like, give me any information that I could about like, how do I get to the track? I don't know. Even you know, like, and then, um, 
I got on a flight. I think the flight only cost like 150 bucks. And then mm-hmm. um, had to figure out the train system. I didn't have you know, no smartphone, no GPS, no yeah. translator thing. No, raw yeah. dog. Essentially. And then like also being me at the time, just completely naive to like everything. I'd be like, oh, this will be fine. I'll just go by myself. I'm not going to have any problems. Is it true that out there in Japan, like most places you go have somebody that can translate to English? Because I, I hear it, it's mixed. It, I think it's different. It, I think it might be different now. But when I went in like 2010, which I mean, really isn't. I mean, to me, that doesn't feel like it's that long ago. But like, it, yeah, it's 13 years yeah. ago. But um, back when I went, if you were like in Tokyo, in like any of the bigger metropolitan areas, it wasn't that bad. But like, Ebisu is pretty rural. Like, yeah, it's yeah. in Nihamatsu, which is this little town. And then it's like way up the mountain. And um, I, I basically, I had to... I had to sit there and like almost negotiate with my coat, uh, my uh, cab driver to take me up to the track because he c- couldn't understand what I was asking. Cause I was just like, I'm think cause I'm like pronouncing it wrong. Yeah. And I'm like, <clears throat> I'm like, uh, Ebisukito, Sukito. And he's like, uh, what, what? And I'm like, Ebisu, like, and he's like, and then he just like, he looks at me and he's like, oh yeah, this dude's a foreigner. He's going to the track. Like, <laughs> it's not that anything I said made sense to him. It's just like, he looked at me like kind of hard. And I goes, understand. I know where you're wanting. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And then, and then this, uh, this cab driver drove like an absolute madman up the hill. Like, I, I mean, they, they got to all drive like that, right? Yeah. Dude, he, he nearly like ran a dude over like on the trip up to the track you want to see some real speed bitch? yeah right like he like he I'm like fast as fuck boy dude he threw the car around this turn and there was this guy walking across the street and he just like slams on his brakes and almost like fucking drifts around the dude and then like sits there and uh sits there staring at the guy walking across the street and the guy in the cab the cab driver is like well, get out of like, my way he's yeah, like acting like the he's way. the problem like, <laughs> like what the fuck are you doing walking across the street yeah that's awesome yeah and, um, but yeah, so the, he got me up to the track and the, the best part was, is that like, I'm like, okay, I'm at the track. And when I got there, I think it was like five o'clock. So the track was just about to close. I don't know anything about like, well, where, how do I go in? Where do I go to go talk to Andy and Emily? Like, where's their, where's power vehicles? And the cab driver basically turned the clock off, drove in the exit of the track because the entrance was closed because the track was just about to close and he drove me straight to power vehicles like he knew exactly where i wanted to go i didn't even ask he just like drops me <laughs> off get out <laughs> drops me off at power vehicles garage in the middle of the track and he didn't even charge me for like the extra time which i thought that was sick yeah cool and uh, we like the psycho cab driver no oh, yeah he was he was amazing and Cheers then to you buddy <laughs> but how many laps did you end up doing in Ebisu? I don't know. Like, I was there for like four days the first time. And um, what are the I, hotels like? <laughs> hotels. Are they as small as they look on camera? I never stayed in a hotel. Oh. Um, I didn't stay in a hotel the whole day. So there's this, there's this building that's across the street from the track that's owned by the track. It's called the driver's hall. Right. And you can stay there for free. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's not comfortable. Uh, it's literally <laughs> just a room, hardwood floors, and a bunch of futons in the back that you can like grab and throw on the floor. But you know what? <laughs> free is free. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah. The first time I went, like I was so broke. Uh, I didn't, I had not hit my target for how much money I needed to save up. So I literally brought MREs with me to eat. Like they were, I brought food in oh, my wow. bag because I'm like, <laughs> I didn't have a, I didn't have a rental car. Dude, like that's hardcore, dude. Bro. I, yeah, it was like one of those things where I was like coming up to it and I was looking at my bank account and I was like, I don't know if I can do this, but I think I, I might do it. I think I might die, but I don't give a shit. I'm gonna do I'll it. I'll be in Japan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I went uh, to um, so I like I went I went to the track and the first person that I ended up meeting after the cab driver dropped me off was Stewie Bryant. Um, like first English speaking person I ran into in Japan. And at the time I had no idea who he was. And, um, and I was just like, I was just asking him cause I was like, I didn't know where the driver hall was. I knew that it existed, but I didn't know where it was located. I didn't know that it was literally just at the entrance. So yeah. I was already there. Um, so he was, uh, you know, he's an Australian guy. He was, uh, I don't know, 2015 or 2016. I can't remember the year, like Australian drift champion. 
Like he runs a bunch of the events yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, huge deal. You're huge, just like, but huge. you're just like, I just need to know where it crashed, bro. Right, right, exactly. So I was, I was like, I was like, hey, uh, do you know where the driver's hall is? Yeah, all right, mate. We're, we're headed there right now. If you want to jump on the, you want to jump on. <laughs> That's a good accent. That's really what the good, fuck? actually. <laughs> if you want to jump on the uh, the the trunk of the Lazo, then we'll uh, we'll head down there. And like I'm like sitting on the trunk of his laurel, holding in Maurice. Yeah, I'm just like and, and, I'm and, ready for dinner, dude. The 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 road, uh, the road like down to the hall. Like I mean, there's it's like all hairpins throughout the whole complex. So yeah. like, trying to get from track to track, and um, I'm sitting on the back, and I'm like, oh, I hope I don't fucking fall off. I don't have, yeah. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm I haven't even like told the military I'm coming over here to drift. I just like I'm like, yeah, I'm going to Japan for vacation. Like I'm not doing anything dangerous because <laughs> <laughs> they make you fill out all these forms about all this. Oh, stuff. sure. Yeah. And I'm just like, I'm just like, no, no, I'm just going over there sightseeing. <laughs> so I'm sitting on sitting on the trunk like I hope I fucking know. So anyway, we end up at the hall and then like pretty much the whole time I was there, I was just like riding with Stewie and his friends because they had a car. All right. So I have a better question. So you went to Ebisu, but you've also done the ring, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, well, I was stationed in Germany for a while. So which one would you, if you had to choose, which one would you rather do? 50 laps at the ring or 50 laps at Ebisu? Uh, it kind of, it, it's it's like one of those things that are like apples, oranges kind of thing. You I know. know. Which one would so, you rather eat? Um, I think now I think I would probably, yeah, I mean, I think I'm going to pick up a suit anytime, but yeah. the, but I think I would, I still want to go drive the rim more. Yeah. Cause I did about the two years I was in Germany. I think I did about 50 laps or so on the ring and yeah, that's badass as fuck. It's funny because it's like 50 doesn't sound like that much, but then like when you put oh, it, no. in, when oh, you put no. it into context, yeah. it, well, no, I know what it is. <laughs> it, yeah. 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 Especially like when You're it's like the fuck out after 50 laps. Yeah. It's, a, it's a quarter of a tank per lap. Like, yeah, because you're just, you know, 10, not nine, 10 minutes, just flat out for that entire time. Plus the elevation change and everything. Me and my two brothers, when we first got a sim, that's what we did. We plugged it up Dude. to play Forza seven. And then we would just get wrecked drunk and drive it and drive Dude. the ring. You it's, know, it's, who could drive it the fastest? Caleb like knocked it out in like seven ten. It's crazy. Because it's, so like, mad. <laughs> it's like, you, you realize like how long that track is. And then you're just like, just like, why would anybody want to sit there and drive on the same lap? And then it was like, you drive it and you're like, Oh my God, this is the that's best, awesome. it's the best track. Yeah. Yeah, it's world. awesome. Even in a video game, I wanted I want to drive it. I was curious about that when I saw both of those. I was like, "Oh, well, I'm gonna ask him that." You know? Yeah. Because like, no, the the track is so much more. In I mean, like you would think it would be, but at the same time, the fr I'd driven it so much in games, and then when I went out to the track in real life, I was like, I literally sat in the uh, like on the right hand side with my blinker on to let everybody pass because I was just like. <sighs> Oh, it's just like the game. <laughs> no it was just like i don't know where i am <laughs> it's so i mean at the time the games were worse because the, the well, first yeah sure, sure the first time that i went on the track was uh on the ring was i think 2012 so like there weren't any laser scanned versions of the track at the time so like oh, they were kind of like yeah yeah no elevation or it's not like, no but you it's know. like i knew the layout but like the elevation wasn't accurate in any way and i was like <laughs> there were parts of the track where i'm like i'm gonna drive up a wall like that is so steep like that's impossible <laughs> you know and there's like optical illusions like when you're going around the track where it looks like it goes to the left but it actually goes to the right and then there's all the little weird bumps that are places that are in bad spots <laughs> like <laughs> consistently Dude, you, there's like a whole youtube yeah. You know, video section, uh, wrecks it, the Nürburgring. You oh, know? yeah. There's like a whole thing about it. You can just oh, go watch shit. it. It's just people just wrecking the fuck out of their cars. There's actually... Um, <laughs> Maybe we're alike in that sense, because you were saying that earlier, and I was like, I don't know if I want to see people wreck their cars, and then I'll, I'll sit there and watch a 60-minute video of people fucking <laughs> shit up. <in laughs> yeah, <Germany. drip> <laughs> yeah, Dude, I, wa I, I watch those Nürburgring videos all the time. Oh, like, dude, the, the ones, dude, when they bounce, it's insane <laughs> looking, it's, dude. The, <laughs> it looks the, like ping pong. The one, uh, the one thing that I'm always thankful for is I've never wrecked my car on the ring and i never wrecked a car driving a car but i was in a wreck at as the a ring pa as a passenger okay i would like to hear this story okay i have video of this nice like, i was i actually had my helmet on and i was wearing a gopro and uh the wreck hits we hit so hard that the gopro arm on the helmet literally snapped in two and the GoPro, Damn. Like, the gopro ended up it was on the right side i'm in the passenger seat it ended up in the sunglasses holder in the center console somehow <sighs> I, I don't know i we my Damn. neck is still screwed to this day and it was like uh this is the very last time i went on the nurburgring actually it was like the last day that i had damn and See, that's why i picked Ebisu. 
No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, I wanted to ask on the Ebisu stuff, um, what what track up there like did you learn the most from? Um, there's so many, I feel like you can learn okay, a lot so, from different ones. I mean, you learn stuff from every track, but I think the track that is the most difficult to get right consistently is Toge, is the Toge course, because it's just so narrow. And it's literally just it like looks... dirt berms. So if you even go off a little bit, you just get stuck. Yeah. <laughs> like over and over again. I, I definitely got stuck a lot. Definitely um, be prepared to I, ride your car off there. Well, no, no. I, I Honestly, the, the, the dirt's really soft, so it doesn't really... It's it, like they pile it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just like, it's basically like the whole track's like a valley. It looks like a brick fucking wall. No, no. It's <laughs> uh, Every time that I've gotten the car stuck there, it really didn't do any damage. It's just I would just get the car stuck. It would just suck you in. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Like, stuck I got, that's good at least. I got stuck where I was like, you know, almost like rock crawling, like teeter-totter, like uh, coming down <laughs> the downhill, and I was just basically there, and I was like, oh, shit. Um, well, um get out walk down the track going oh, i hope nobody drive nobody's going to drive through the track walk down there find somebody and have them like tow me out <laughs> like funny that happened a few times uh i completely bend my exhaust uh there because i backed down like one of the hairpins i basically like put the whole trunk into the dirt and then like bent the exhaust to the point to where it was just dragging on the ground so i just removed it and then now well open down pipe now this is it's an rb it still sounds good yeah it sounds <laughs> open down pipe <laughs> yeah. rb sounds cool it sounds fucking good all right, so yeah, I, you're gonna have to do because I don't even understand what you're talking about. Which one? Like what the Kelsey? What well, you you fucking oh, spot Korea. for Kelsey? What is yeah, Korea? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was spot, I was spotting for Kelsey last year, and um, it was. I mean, it's just kind of one of those things. I've I've spotted for some pro am teams and sort of you know like I don't know off and on for like years. Uh, I think the first time I ever did it was for Harry Travola, like back in Nopi like for the Nopi like championship that doesn't exist anymore. And, um, and then I spotted for fellow for a couple rounds of his like pro-am before he got to FD. And then I just kind of been out there and like Kelsey was looking for somebody and I was like, I mean, I'll do it. <laughs> I, I didn't even think I was going to be like high on the list or anything like that. But yeah. So like last year we went to all the prospect rounds and, uh, was, was spotting and, that's, I mean, that's an interesting gig, like realistically, like to do it at F, at like the FD level, you know, even if it's just pro spec, um, you get such like priority access to be able to see like exactly what the judges are seeing. That's funny. Know? We're talking about Kelsey. Yeah. Scotty just DM me. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, <that's funny. laughs> yeah, no, that's <laughs> <So> funny. <random. laughs> that's funny. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, it's like, I mean, last year, obviously we had a bunch of mechanical problems like with the team and everything. It was our car's a co it's a coyote car, right? It's a coyote, yeah, yeah. It's 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 interesting because it like it doesn't really fit in the car like at all. So they had to do all kinds of weird stuff to basically make the engine fit. And some of the problems is is like it's still running like factory exhaust manifolds on it, but it's at like 850 horsepower. So the EJTs are like off the chart, and uh, it's just like running super hot. We blew a head gasket uh, in Jersey. And we actually, we think we blew the head gasket in Yuck. OSW. We think we blew it, blew God, it at OSW. Coyote head gasket. Yuck. He, oh, yeah. No, no. But no, thank you. Dude, Kel Kelsey's dad <laughs> Call is it. like. The whole season's over. Fuck that. <laughs> no, right, right, right. Like, Just Kelsey, grab a new one. Kelsey's dad is like the coolest dude, though. Like, he is like the most supportive parent I've ever seen because he's just like, he does all mo almost all the work on her car is what her dad. Yeah. Like, and just he tore the heads apart threw new gaskets on there in between rounds. And then we were trying to figure out why it happened. And it turns out that it was actually to do with the link ECU that we were mandated to run. It apparently can't control the cams. <laughs> it can't control the cams properly. So it was just um, changing the advance and the retard on the cams randomly. So it was causing like these spikes and, pressure wow. and it actually caused the uh, engine to lift the head <laughs> so for like the last God round damn. in utah we actually had the action utah and st louis we had the cams completely locked out i was gonna say did you just unplug them or turn them off yeah it, it was and it wasn't it it wasn't really that the ecu did it it was the new firmware that um fd wanted us to run for 2022 20, uh, like we didn't have any apparently didn't have any problems the year prior 
Uh, it was the 2022 the firmware updated stuff. Wow. It tells you uh, tells them all the logs and stuff. Well, yeah. it, it was uh, the it was the firmware that like locked out like traction control and like all the other like features and stuff uh, that yeah, you could yeah. do on the ECU gotcha. that may be a competitive advantage if you wanted to try to like work that in there. And uh, so that firmware though, we had to revert back to the previous firmware under you know like we had to like you know hey can we do this? Yeah, yeah. Are we allowed? Because our like car is not working right because of it and then uh utah we actually didn't have any really any car problems but we weren't prepared because it was everybody's first time at that track right and mm -hmm. we didn't realize how much the track temperature changed between practice and and uh competition so like we had dropped a couple psi because we we're like oh well the sun's out it's going to be the track's going to be a little warmer so we're going to need more grip but we should have dropped like 10 like 10 psi in the rear tires to like because like from from practice to qualify I mean, not to qualifying but from practice to competition <coughs> we were the first battle out so we didn't have any time to like uh, walk. Yeah. we couldn't watch anybody else run and kelsey basically went out and she got on the radio like because she spun and she got on the radio and she's like it literally feels like an ice rink out here because like how much the grip had changed that's crazy so yeah it's like one of those things like you go to a new place like that and you didn't really realize that, but we talked to like Sorensen's, you know, to Amanda and her team. Yeah. And they said that because they had gone out there testing like a week prior that they had already like been logging like the temperatures and they already knew like how much mm -hmm. the grip changed and everything oh. like that. And we're like, Big oh, Daddy they had the cheat codes. Yeah. We were like, oh man, that would have been nice information to have, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, Stupid. <laughs> it's like, you no, know, Kelsey's, Kelsey's an awesome driver, but like there's just so much sometimes that happened because like for years she was battling power steering issues with the car and they were really bad and they finally got the power steering issues fixed like last year and, or not last year, but the year prior. What'd she change? Uh, the pump actually, uh, but before they, they were running, they were replacing like all the different parts of the system, trying to like balance everything out. And it was like really inconsistent. Like sometimes it would just cut out, cut in, cut out, cut in. And then eventually they figured out that actually it was the brand of pump. It wasn't necessarily like having to run like some kind of specialized custom pump. They changed the brand and then suddenly it just, everything worked. Huh. Yeah. That's, that's so, random. but for like almost four years with that car, they were just power steering issues, always trying to run through there. And it's like, you know, if you're, I mean, I'm, I'm one of those people that, you know, cause you have people that are like, oh, you don't need power steering. You can just, you know, just muscle it around or anything like that. That's not true. <sighs> not at that level. Like, yeah, especially yeah. not in a car like that. Yeah. So, but yeah, not in a S. 14 with a heavy ass coyote in right. the front you know yeah, like right. you can do it in a miata you know yeah. what i mean and have a looped rack or something yeah or I'm, depowered but yeah i'm like one of those people i have like bad tendonitis like in my like uh elbows so uh whenever i drive something that's like really hard to steer like that like my arms just start screaming it's like it's not like a strength issue it's just like the tendons like decide to just so do people up. tell her that like just muscle through it People, people have said that it was a bad excuse for like a long time. You know, I've, I've, I've heard. How are you going to tell a girl that? Right. right. <laughs> you know, Dude, I'm going to make the internet really mad again. Dude, I mean, girls are not as strong as dudes. How are you going to tell somebody that? That's yeah. Yeah. crazy. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's a ridiculous car to drive anyway, if it works properly, if you like just any FD level car, but you know, at the amount of grip that they have dialed into those cars, like they already want to just bucking Bronco you all around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you have the power steering issue. That's it's just Dude, it makes you want it makes you want like cars. a backup car so you can just be like okay well here how about you come out here and you drive yeah. a lap and then when they spin out you right. go out there and you put a firework in the car <laughs> like, motherfuckers dude I can't stand people like that yeah no I mean it's like uh, you know the the people that always like look at like FD drivers like struggling in yeah, like a car yeah. and then they'll be they'll be like oh well you know me and my me and my 300 horsepower 350z I could do that well you know it's, right, it's like no, that no, I'm no, like you okay can't. you're not internet. driving a car that is gripped up like that like I guarantee you it yeah. is not <laughs> ripped up like that and um and then also like the tracks themselves are you know they're they're all I would say probably Orlando is probably the one that is the easiest to say get right but also the problem with that is because everybody gets it so close to the same it's really hard for the judges to like even really pick on stuff yeah, yeah. so it makes it, it's like it's like if you have a really difficult track it shows who's you know who's on it and who's not but then you have a track like osw where kind of everybody can run it so stuff. well yeah. that you're just splitting hairs on it yeah you know um but 
yeah, no, I mean, I'm I'm excited for this season for um for Kelsey because I think now that we figured that out with the ECU, like that should help. Um, I don't know if she's gonna have her new car ready in this season or not, but uh, I'm not sure if I'm even really supposed to talk about it. But, ah, fuck. but uh, <laughs> I have not. I didn't ask. Uh, so well, you can tell us, and we can cut it if she doesn't want you to talk about it. Ooh. Um, so she's supposed to be driving an S550. Uh, they have an S550 that they're building, which because they really like the motor, you know, the Coyote. Sure. They, they love yeah, they're it. used to it now. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. used to it. And also it's been really, it, other than this <clears throat> head gasket thing, which was not the motor's fault, actually. It was the the firmware couldn't control the cams. You right. Know? So that's not the motor's fault. They've been on the same motor since they put it in the car. Like it, they've never had a motor issue. Yeah. Okay. You know, and it runs, it runs good, makes good, makes the power that we need. And it is very drivable and I don't really have any real motor issues other than the head gasket thing. But like I said, it's not the motor's fault. And then, um, uh, so, but the problem is, is all of the, all of the stuff of trying to get it in an S14. Yeah. So if you put it trying in, to put 10 pounds of shit in a five pound sack. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, if you put it in, if you're running, a, you know, an S550, that motor came in there and you actually can work on it. And it's yeah. like, you have much better issues with Could like, do headers headers you know different plumbing shit you could run two two turbos on it instead of a supercharger if you wanted to and um dude i, I have <clears throat> i have literally been up next to an 800 horsepower unopened coyote before oh, i've yeah. been right beside it yeah <laughs> it's fucking, and i'm an ls guy and i was like damn that's fucking badass <laughs> right, right and then the mo the motor that um that her father has for the new car is a 5.2 liter like crate motor like you know it's a built motor oh the, oh, the okay. one before big fancy the one before was like on basically an unopened coyote with like arp head studs on it like and it was making 850 800 horsepower and just with a blower on it and mm. stock stock exhaust manifolds <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know that's awesome. so that's pretty sick but um, the Mustang is, uh, I, I, last I heard that it was, it was coming along a little slow. So I don't think, I don't know if it's going to be ready this year. Um, but it would be really cool if it was, cause I, I'd love to see her in like, in something that's a little, a little, yeah. you know, cause I mean, not that it's not competitive, there's but been a more lot of change ups yeah. in FD this year, yeah. as far as car wise and stuff like that. What do you think of the turbo fans in the back of the RTRs? Uh, the turbo, what? The, the fan deals oh, in the back, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, no, I mean, I don't have a real opinion. I haven't seen them like close up enough to even really like tell. Like, it looks weird though. Sort of, yeah, it is different. But I'm gonna do it on my car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it does look weird Suck. as fuck though. Dude. Why? It's gonna be funny. Yeah, I honestly, I really don't like the look. Uh, the body kits that they did for them. Really? Like, they look I so oh, silly. Oh, because you don't like the square, the though. The square yeah. fenders really throws me off. I think it looks I good. Like yeah, them. I do, too. I think it looks yeah. cool. It this, looks like as far as you can go. Surprisingly, like, the discs in the back, I don't mind. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't the arrow, mind that. The arrow wheels, the arrow disc wheels. Yeah, because yeah, it's a flat face yeah. wheel, and oh, that, Bond just oh, hated the so, look of it. So, so I'm going to do that to my car. I put a render on my face because, like, I don't know if you've seen my face, my Instagram or whatever. No, I have. I follow, I mean, fall for the memes, obviously. Yeah, right, obviously. That's, <laughs> that's a trope everybody comes yeah. for. And then they're like, oh, wait, he makes videos too. But anyway, I put a picture of it up mm -hmm. with Photoshopped arrow fans over my rear oh. wheels. And I was like, you can't make everyone more mad with that. And then it's the picture of that. And dude, <laughs> yeah. the fucking comments are hilarious. They're like, you better fucking not. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I surprisingly don't mind them. I think it'll look cool and be funny. And I'm only going to do it on my spare set that right. I only have a pair of. I don't have four. So it'll be funny to like have both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Like, Is that why you needed to know what? Yeah, I need to know okay. so I can tell them because they'll look up the specs. But actually, they tell me it was like $700 and I can make it for way less than that. So I probably should make my own. We'll see. It's just hope caps. That's yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just the actually, looks, you know? yeah, 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 that's all it is. Actually, funny enough, I mean, like BMW made a wheel. Uh, they're called uh, ah, damn. I'm Let's forgetting. I'm forgetting the name. It's called like, Turbo Fan. Yeah, the tur the Turbo Fan. Like they they actually had um, it was there. They had uh, uh, they had like a it was like a hubcap was the actually the fascia of the wheel, and then you could like take it off, and it was like double uh, a double five spoke underneath, and it actually like looked pretty cool because you could essentially like. You could take the fascia of the wheel off, and then you could snap it back on. It was on the five series, on like the M5, and huh. uh, I know guys that run them on their S13s, but they're actually getting pretty rare as a wheel anymore. And they're worth a lot of money. Okay. But uh, wow. but I always thought I was like, well, it's designed specifically for that. Like you could make different like fascias that you could just like snap on, like hubcaps. Yeah, and then you could like 
you know, change your wheels every event or something like that. Well, because all you have to do yeah. is just pop them on, <laughs> pop them off. You could like mix and match and do Talk all Talk about flex stuff. points. Yeah, it was, I mean, those were just OEM wheels though. Like uh, I had a friend who had a, had a pair of them and he would just sometimes run the fascias on them, sometimes not. And you'd be like, oh boy, you got to do wheels. And no, the same wheels. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, all right, so did you you watch? Did you watch to the end of FD? I don't want to spoil it. For Just you. like literally thirty minutes before we got here. So you did watch it though. Yeah, no, watch. Oh, so it's thing. fresh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's very fresh. So do you think Jonathan Cash got robbed? I think so. Yeah, um, I, but, I mean, uh, just as a as a point of consistency, like I mean, I've never seen somebody lose a battle to someone who spun to someone who spun, but also to somebody specifically because their bumper came off. I mean, like, look, well, it, was, <clears throat> it wasn't just the bumper. The trunk oh, I, lid flew up, the, the and, trunk but lid it didn't come up, off, but it, it, yeah, oh, it didn't you know, fully it's like, come off. Mm-mm. It's like, oh, I thought it came all the way off in the past. I mean, this might be due to like, cause they've changed a lot of the judging this, this year so far, like in the regulations, everything is mm-hmm. very different. And, um, I mean, I don't want to say like he got completely robbed as in, yeah, I mean, like, I, yeah, we just, say but that television. I would say that it's very, it's kind of a little odd call for, for the bumper in the trunk to make the difference yeah. in at an at fault. Thing. Okay. So, okay. So I'm, I'm not, I've never done spotting. Right. Mm-hmm. And I don't do, I've done one competition, right. I'm not like a professional about this stuff. Right. We're just shooting yes. the shit. Okay. Yeah. But to me in the rules, it says you can't lose momentum and you can't lose your line. Right. He didn't slow down, okay, and it didn't mess up his line. It messed up the other guy's line, yeah. and then because I have like a background in drag racing, dude, a chase is a race. If you there, stick your foot back in it and come after me, that's it. It's on. There I, is a bit. Know? There yeah. is a bit in the com- in the uh, competition <clears throat> rules that if you have a door, uh, a trunk, or some other uh, openable thing on the car comes open in the run, that that can actually be considered an incomplete uh, and. It's. I mean, there was one run like years ago where I remember somebody's carbon roof literally f- ripped off the car. Like it just, mm-hmm. f- it just it, like flew off the car, and then they got an incomplete for it. Bec- even though it's not, it's supposed to be fastenable stuff, but the roof they were kind of like they. I remember them going back and like forth, going area. like, "Is that because it's not supposed to? Yeah. Come, you know, <laughs> it just just it happened to come off." Um, but yeah, no, like I've seen in the past, there's been people that have lost simply just because their hatch opened. And like that's in the rules, but it was because there were in the past, there were times where people had stuff open up in the middle of a run and then like the chase driver bails because he's like, oh, I don't know what's coming out of that. You know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And I get it. I get it. But like. I don't know. I, I think I per think, the I rules, think it, it should have been right one more call. time at the I very think, minimum, in yeah. my opinion. I think it should have been one more time, but I also think that, you know, like per the spirit of the rules, his trunk didn't come on. It didn't come open because it was unlatched. It came open because he got in contact with the wall. And it's like, yes, the wall is a that's a, that's basically a big deduction for like hitting the wall, coming off angle and everything like that. But he didn't straighten out and it he did continue the whole rest of the run. And then, you know, Rome did react and it did throw him off. But at the same time, it's like but okay, yeah, so it's like, is it, is it, yeah, there's too the re- much of a gray area. Per the rule book, I genuinely he think spun it was the out right two call. zones later. And dude, honest, I like Rome Charpentier. I, I like no, he's yeah. exciting to watch. Yeah, yeah. no, no, I, I mean, but he dude, spun out two zones later. Mm-hmm. Or, he, he, yeah, two he zones didn't, later. He didn't get around. He didn't get yeah. around the horseshoe uh, all the way. Yeah. It's not like he made a complete run and then they were like docking. Jonathan. But, you see, but okay, so yeah. he hit the wall and he spun. In my eyes, it's like okay, well, it messed his mojo up, so that's probably why he spun. But it yeah. should have been one more time. Anyway, I'm, I do. I think it. W- I think it. Might I have, think they needed to play for the show a little bit more and right. just done the I, one more time. I think what I they ended up doing is they might have, they might have incompleted both of them on that run on that the run that Rome was chasing. Right. So when Ke- John oh, when uh, Hurst hit the wall, they were basically two incompletes because then. Rome didn't complete that run fully because he spun. Mm-hmm. So what they did is they did a lead versus lead, yeah. right? And they do that, that they do that a lot. So like if they decided that both were were incompletes on that run, then they go lead for lead. So you have a incom- you have an incomplete lead from Jonathan Hurst and then you had a complete lead from Rome. So Okay, well then I guess that makes sense. Cuz if they incompleted him for the trunk popping open or something like that then it's like that makes sense but it's like some of the little nitty-gritty details in the competition book you know like when you read the rule book like fully and you're like okay because i mean sometimes 
it explains a lot of the decisions. If you if you want to take the time to read through it, it's it's pretty boring. But you know, it, it, yeah, it's uh, rules. It's, it's rules. They're dry. <laughs> rules suck. I like reading rule books though. I've always I, I read rule books for other series that I don't have to just because I. I get in this little game of going, okay, where can I find something yeah, where's that the middle nobody's line? doing, yeah. right? Like for a while in FD, there wasn't uh, there wasn't anything about traction control or running GPS in your car. And I was sitting there, I was like, oh, I know somebody's going to take advantage of that. Like there's going to be somebody that's going to figure out something about like how they can uh, program into the ECU. I want this percentage of wheel speed over ground speed. And then have it have the ECU limit it to where you don't blow your tires off, but like you have just that percentage to where you're still still mm-hmm. moving. Oh forward. yeah, so you you're on the pedal at a hundred, but right. it's only commanding eighty or something to keep the wheel speed. As yeah, it's like if your wheel speed's at like a hundred and forty, and you want a hundred ground speed, and then you 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 don't want any more than that, but you can keep your foot throttle pinned, and then the ECU just kind of like controls the thought yeah. but the thing is though is that around the same time that i had that thought and i was when i was reading the rule book was when they changed it so <laughs> i'm like i'm like gotcha you know gotcha, I, I'm, bitch. I'm not the only one that saw that <laughs> and funny. um there i mean there was a there's like there's a guy in um oregon i uh, just watched this video he's swapping a ferrari california 4.3 liter uh v8 into his Subaru WRX to run in rally racing because he he saw the loophole that I saw in the rule book where turbo cars have to run a restrictor. It's like a 33 millimeter restrictor. So they can only make about 300 ish horsepower, but they made 400 foot pounds of torque because they like tune everything in the engine to work with that restrictor. But you could have up to a four and a half liter naturally aspirated engine uh and there was no restrictions at all like it was just basically well it was like you can make as much power as you want out of a four and a half liter engine so the guy was like all right can i get a 458 italian engine italian engine it makes 400 562 horsepower (laughs) (laughs) na so he uh, gonna spank so well he could he he came to the conclusion because he looked up ryan turek's you know four five eight six and he was like oh uh that engine's thirty five thousand dollars used for like a bad one like one that doesn't like run yeah you have to do some so he was too. like okay that's too much money well he found a sweetheart of a deal on a, like a 4.3 liter uh california flat plane crank v8 and they make 462 horsepower so it's like yeah it's like 162 more than the rest of the rally cars are making and yeah he swapped that in the wrx and he said he only gained the car only gained like 40 pounds dude that's awesome yeah what it sounds fuck? absolutely sick if you look it up on online he's got a video of him testing it at dirt fish and it is just like Wah! like it does not sound like a wrx at all anymore it sounds like it literally sounds like an f1 car driving, dude, i would very much that's like to so that. cool i'm like i'm like i want to see it on stage okay so you also drove korea right so um I was in Korea for a year and I went to a couple of drift events while I was there, but I didn't drive. Uh, essentially, I went there trying to do the Will Rogue thing, like taking, mm-hmm. you know, like because I couldn't own a car when I was in Korea. I wasn't allowed to. So uh, I went. What are to, the parameters around? So, like, why? Well, because it's a short tour, and also because the base that I was stationed at has literally was never built with parking in mind. Like, there's like no, <laughs> there's no parking lots. Like, <laughs> wah, wah. Oh, like only certain officers USA, are allowed. To own car. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and uh, so since I was over there, I was like, well, I can't own a car while I'm here, so. I got to find something else to do. So I took up like photography and I started like, you know, taking pictures at events and doing like, you know, yeah. doing that whole thing. And then plus I'd come back from Ebisu going, man, I had this really crappy, like, you know, Kodak, like easy share camera yeah. that like took terrible pictures. And I, I met one of Stewie's friends had this big DSLR and I was like, oh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to get one of those cameras yeah, yeah. and I'm going to take pictures and stuff. So I went up to, there was a, a drift event that I went to in Korea that was literally a quarter mile from the DMZ, like you could see the barbed wire fences from the track, <laughs> like to where, like on the other side of those fences, that's North Korea. Like that's, you know, some totalitarian, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, Sketchy communi- communist government is literally right across that fence. That's hilarious. And we're like drifting cars over here. I'm like, man, that's, that shows you like the divide. Yeah. So, like on that side, they're like eating rats for food. And like on this side, we're burning tires for fun. Yeah. <laughs> You know, that's hilarious. 
That's yeah. So okay. Fun. So, did you ever go to any drift events in Germany? Oh yeah. No, I went to a couple while I was there in Germany. It's a, it was a little hard to do it over there though because like they their events like I mean the language barrier and like searching for things on the internet back then translation wasn't so good. Um, but also, um, they their their events are strange. They they have like they have like absolute beginner level like event, and then they have pro, and there's like nothing in between. It's like you There's you go no, to like grassroots dudes that are just out there partying. It's, it's a whole different kind of scene. Like uh, the one the one the first grassroots event that I went to, I was very confused about it because I got there and I was like, "Why is there a water truck here?" <laughs> and like it was on this absolutely That's massive tough. skid pad, and they had this course laid out. And I was like, I was like, they're wetting the track down on purpose. Like no they were way, literally dude. running a truck around the whole track just blowing water all over it dude i have talked about trying to do that here in the states right just so like if you had your own little spot and you kept yeah. it wet you could make a set of tires last you for a month oh you no know? I mean, no yeah. yeah no like I, I showed up there and i was thinking because i didn't know about that i was like i was like oh man i, I didn't bring enough tires i'm gonna only drive for like maybe half the day because I, I i brought a set and another set and i'm like that's not gonna last right? yeah and then i show up there and they're wetting down the track and i'm like yo what is this and then the one set that i drove up there on lasted the whole day i drove home on them because like because they were wetting down the track but the reason they wet down the tracks because noise it's not tire wear it's actually because Germany, like in Germany in general, they're very, very conscious about like noise for your neighbors. So wow. even though this place was out in the middle of nowhere, like I the closest neighbor was probably like 10 miles away. They're like, they're still, oh, we have to be very quiet. And I'm like, what, what the, the it's, hell? It's, 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 weird. <laughs> it's weird. But th it was fun, though, because like there's also like they're very concerned about noise, but they weren't concerned about safety like at all. And you, <laughs> well, yeah, you would think you would think <laughs> like the most the, German thing ever. <laughs> yeah. You would think like the Germans, though, like they're like, oh, tongue, we have to have this in very, very similar situation. Everybody has to be very safe. You have to wear the accent. You know, I know, you're what killing the hell? it. Bro. So killing it. <laughs> they, uh, they're, you know, so I get there and they're like, you didn't require they didn't, you have to wear helmets. Uh, you could have any passenger in your car for anything. Like, it didn't matter. Like, and you get could, in. You, you could run tandem, whatever. Like, if you want to get close to another car, because they just run hot lap. They just run that wet down track. It's too hot in here. Take hot. the doors off. <laughs> and and I actually ran. I I was running so many laps that even though they wet they wet down the track, I'd been out. I think I ran thirty five minutes, forty minutes, just straight just driving. And I'm just wow. sitting there. Just, I got into this groove where I like completely lost track of time, and I'm just. <laughs> Lapping uh, the track, uh, the do. track, uh, lapping uh, the track, and uh, that becomes your ticking I just clock. had music blasting, and I was the only person there wearing a helmet. <laughs> I felt dumb because I'm like, no I one bet, else is yeah. wearing. Like, it's like you show up to the skate park, and they're like, you must wear pads, and everyone's like, nah, we don't do that. You're just like covered in pads. Like, what, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was that was strange, and uh, but I met this German guy. Who was there and he just ended up just riding with me like the whole time and we were just sitting there shooting the shit while we're while i'm driving like he eventually spoke, he speak english he spoke enough he spoke way better english than i spoke german so like, okay. it's like i can do an accent but i can't speak german right. i'm bad with, <laughs> i'm very bad with languages good with accents Heinz beer bitte that's so, all i know <laughs> yeah 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 scheiße sie auf dem tisch um my dad was stationed in germany when he was there oh, okay. so i know a little yeah no like german german the problem is the grammar i can't under it's so hard like it's like i can learn the words but i can't like the grammar makes the no pronunciation sense to is just too hard yeah. well no no not the pronunciation though i think the pronunciation is not that bad it's it's actually in the vocabulary is not hard it's the grammar they have five words for the word the the fuck what? and you have no idea when you're supposed to use what they just yell at you if you get it wrong <laughs> nice I mean, you just watch any video about somebody trying to learn German. That, that's the main thing that they, they're, like, <laughs> they're like, I have no idea what pronouns I'm supposed to use at any given time. <laughs> like they have, they have three genders for, for things, right. And people, places and things. And you'd be like, oh, well, you know, a table that's neutral, right. Neuter, right. Cause they have male, neuter and uh female. And you're like, table's neuter. No, it's female. Why? Why? I have no idea. <laughs> They can't explain it either. Why? Don't know. No, no idea. So I was like, you try to... In, gotcha, bitch! Yeah, and it's like, you try to speak German, and if you don't get those things right, they it's like broken, and they don't understand you. Like, it's like, you wow. have to be... They're so specific about everything to where, like, there's a... That that whole, like, South Park episode where the... Where the um, 
uh, you know, his Cartman's mom's in the the Shiza video or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're like, oh, it's in mine Shiza. And, you know, so you, <laughs> you have, you know, it's like eat my shit, right? Yeah, right. And, but the thing is, is actually that phrase in German does not make sense. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, if you walk up to it, you can walk up to a German person on the street and go, Es in mein Scheiße, right? Like eat my shit, right? Now to us, if you somebody walked up and be like, eat my shit, you'd be like, you'd be like, what, what the hell are you talking about? Why you get like almost like you know, if it's some random person, you might get offended, right? Maybe, right. maybe. Yeah, yeah. or you might laugh. Yeah. But Germans oh. are like, who? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, you. Uh, so so you will eat my shit, or uh, I will eat yeah. your shit. Who who's whose shit are we eating? <laughs> like, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let's do FD. Okay. We, we did a little bit, but <laughs> so, so from like what, like how it's changed over the years? No, no. LZ crashed. Oh, Let's LZ. talk about that. Oh yeah, the LZ crash. Um, I didn't even get to see it. I, so so I it. will just say, I think everyone should just leave that guy the fuck alone. Because no, no, for sure. He's yeah. under so much pressure, and then he crashes on the car, and then like, dude, I like we got so much hate from his fan base for just asking like general questions, yeah. you know, and he's like at the forefront of drifting. So we're going to talk about him sometimes. And so dude, they came after us for that, but then I'll go on the internet and dude, these people are mean. These people are, yeah. Yeah. These people are mean Out. to this yeah. guy. I'm like, dude, yeah. no, no wonder he's you know, like, so such a recluse, you know? No, I mean that, that whole thing where like he didn't like blow his nose properly and people are like, Oh, he's using cocaine. <laughs> he's like, he got the white underneath oh, dude, his that nose. Was that was so like, that was so stupid. I mean, but they're oh literally, these people are, are they're They want to jump on him for everything. And yeah. the thing is, is that, I mean, like I, I've met Adam several times. He's a nice guy. Like, sure. he, you know, he's very busy, he's very busy. He's got a lot of things on his mind. He's like doing a lot of mm. things. So sometimes he might get a little distant or something, but like, I got to get the guy a break. Like yeah. if I had yeah. that much going on, I would, I would not be able to like talk straight. That's to what they if I was learn. as busy as Adam LZ, yeah. I would do Coke. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> that's honestly, how I would keep up. You know, you, like, you think, <laughs> you think like how else would you beep. get that much done? I mean, I am way too lazy to eat. I mean, like I have to respect the hustle hundred percent because he's literally living the dream. But at the same time, he is working extremely hard to make that happen. And people mm. don't see just how much time and effort it takes to like constantly grease those gears and keep that shit rolling. Yeah, for I mean, sure. That is hard. Yeah. I tried to do the YouTube thing for like six months, like oh, I'm going to do daily uploads after about like, I don't know, three weeks or so. I was like, I'm burnt out on this. Yeah. this I watched a, a podcast that TJ Hunt was on and he was explaining, dude, what the fuck? It cut, cut out again. Uh, we were saying that Talk about LZ. should get away from making fun of LZ. Yeah. Uh, which like, you know, I'm all about like razzing somebody a little bit, you know, yeah. like poking at yeah. or whatever. But, you know, it, his first debut in the brand new car that they don't even fucking make and he bonks it. And then the first thing everyone does is like, LOL, yeah. get him out of but, FD. It's like, dude, fuck off. But at the same time, at the same time, Chelsea overrode in this almost like the same area too. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, and, I, and, and I get it. It's a new car. I called him out. They said he you know? sucks. And I was like, well, Matt Field crashed. You think he sucks? Right. And then he right. wins. So Matt I don't Field think so. did the fucking same exact thing almost. Yeah. yeah. It's the track, you know, yeah. he just had to be unlucky dude. and people don't like him because he's you know, he's successful. Dude, FD is so wild because of the fact that like the most difficult track of the year is the first track. Like if you really put it into perspective, you have no runoff. It's all walls. Mm -hmm. Everything's yeah. walls. Yeah. And then it is the most difficult like line that you have to run where it's like, yeah. you have to have your bumper on the walls every single point or else you're getting major deductions. So yeah, the fact they don't all crash is crazy enough. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like the fact what they're doing is almost like superhuman when you think about it. Like because that level of precision is like close to impossible. <laughs> I mean, it oh, really yeah. is, and they're doing it over and over, run for run. The fact that they have any mistakes, like so few mistakes, is amazing. Oh, it, it cra crap. Yeah, it's it. too hot. Oh my gosh! Do you want me to open the door? Gotta get a. No, nah, that's fine. We'll just leave we'll it just off. leave the last bit for but, these two. Um, uh, well, I guess just run through, uh, what is, damn, I don't lose. <laughs> You're out of it, huh? <laughs> All right. What's one piece of advice you would give to somebody that's new, that's trying to get oh, into drifting? Christ. Um, do what everyone else does and don't try to be different. <laughs> that's <laughs> great advice. Because that's, that's what I did my entire life. And it's always bit me in the ass. Yeah. And it's the whole reason why no one knows who I am. Uh, <laughs> no, straight, straight up. I mean, I've driven, I've driven, a, I've driven some competitions and I've done well in competition. I've never won a competitions, but I mean, I've, I, I literally, uh, Shulman, I drove in one, uh, at Sebring where he won and I was second 
And I was in like the lowest powered car in the entire field. And I've always been like the low power hero because I refuse to do engine swaps. I refuse to do it's stupid stuff. Like you can easily build a car that will be reasonably competitive. Just follow the formula. You know, a fucking cat. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you want to hang so out cute. with me? I want to. I want to <laughs> hang out with you guys. So, um, but I love he, Showman. He's so cool. I text him all the time. Yeah, bother him. Yeah, no, Matt. Matt's great. Matt's a great guy. I like, love you. And um, we're. Uh, but I, I feel like a lot of people they always want to kind of do something different, and I totally understand that because it's my whole life. Like I hate anything that's popular. Like just it's part of me in my being. Mm-hmm. And now BMWs are popular, despite the fact that I've I started. I feel like I started that shit. Like I I bought mine. Trendsetter. Uh, I bought mine at the exact <laughs> same time that Chelsea did. Like we literally bought them at the in the exact same month. Like mm-hmm. and our the first events driving them were like the same place at PBIR and. Uh, uh, and from, and there's the reason why he got one. And the reason that I got one was the exact same person, Mr. Sean love of SLR, uh, was, yeah. the, was basically convinced me to get one instead of a three fifty Z. You know, I had no interest in BMWs before. And I was like, well, oh, you, you know, he's telling me these things are really good and everything. And I bought one and then I haven't looked back since. And, um, you know, at the time on Bimmer forums, there were like five people that drove an E36. Like yeah. the, there's like five people in the country that drifted in E36 at the time. Uh, so there was no information. <laughs> so, okay. So on this camera right here, you can plug your people or you can just pat yourself on um, the back, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Like, uh, I'd like to, uh, say, uh, SLR, uh, number one for BMW angle kits. Uh, I used to work there. I'm very biased. So believe me. Um, <laughs> wrong with that. <laughs> we're the best. Just and ask us. <laughs> I don't work there anymore, but I still, I really, really love the company and support it. Uh, and then also, um, I have a YouTube channel. No one watches it. It's not very good. So if you want to go, you want to go laugh at like a lot of old videos of me driving, uh, it's, uh, Piner on YouTube. And then I have uh, an Instagram that's Piner underscore fab pH. Cause I'm dumb. And, um, uh, but it's, that's a mostly gun content. So if you like guns, go there. That's pretty cool. Hell yeah. Hell Link yeah. in the description. Sick. Of course. But uh, that's it for this one. So appreciate you coming on. Yeah. It was awesome. Um, but that that's it. See you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs>